Testing out plumbing hacks some plumbers don't want you to know. Now you know me, I'm Roger Wakefield. I've been plumbing for over 42 years and I know tips and tricks some plumbers don't even know, but they sure don't want you to know because it's gonna save you money in case of an emergency. So today I'm gonna show you two repairs that literally is something you can do at home if you can get to your problem and it may help be a great solution until you can get a plumber out there or until you can get the things together to fix it yourself. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to fix things like a hole in a PVC pipe or a hole in a piece of copper. And this is of course temporary, but it's something that some plumbers don't even know to do. Some may know, but they don't wanna show you and they definitely don't want you to know because if you can do this when you're having an emergency, say it's the middle of the night and you've got a geyser coming up in your front yard, maybe it's not a geyser, maybe just water spraying, but you get up and dig it out or you can uncover it and you can see it and you wanna shut it down, man, I can teach you something that may help solve your problem and hopefully keep you from having to spend extra money on an emergency plumbing call. So the first one we're gonna do is PVC pipe. Now normally, PVC pipe will crack. But we're gonna say that you've got a three quarter inch PVC line in your yard that has a hole in it. And I have seen that happen. Either it was sitting on a rock, something pushed in it. Anyway, a hole was created. It wasn't enough to crack it, but a hole. And then I'm gonna show you how to make a repair that will last you for a little while. Now, it's a repair. This is not for a permanent fix, anything at all like that, but it might be something that can get you through the middle of the night or through the weekend so you don't have to call out an emergency plumber. So let's put a hole in this and then let me show you how I'd fix it. So we're gonna go ahead and get our three quarter inch pipe in here and then I'm gonna put a hole in it. Now you're gonna need a piece of one inch the next size up in order to make this repair. You're also gonna need a hose clamp. Okay, so first of all, I'm gonna cut a short piece of this one inch. Now I don't need a piece very big because literally all I'm doing is trying to cover up a hole. Now, make sure you don't get your fingers anywhere near the blade because it can take them off. We're just gonna put a little bitty hole in here. That's normally the size you'll find in a hole if you find a hole in a line. The reason being, it's set on a rock, it's set on a stone, it's set on something that caused that to happen. Now, it doesn't happen often, but I find holes every now and then. So, we're gonna say, okay, that's a hole. And actually, to make it more fun, we're gonna go ahead and make it just a little bit bigger. This way, it's just big enough for you to see. So I'm gonna cut a slit in it right there, and then I'm gonna move over a little bit. I don't wanna go all the way around. I like to keep a piece of pipe a little bit bigger than half the diameter. So if you look at this, now it'll actually even just snap on there. But I want a little bit more than that. If you don't have a torch, you don't have anything, you could literally clip that on there Take a hose clamp, put it in position and tighten it up. That may work, but what I wanna do is I wanna show you something different. So I'm gonna take a torch and I'm gonna do two different things. I'm gonna heat the inside of this fitting, but I'm also gonna heat the outside of the pipe a little bit. Now I'm gonna turn it over to where I've got it straight up and down where I can see it good. Now literally, all I'm gonna do is heat the inside. I don't wanna burn it. I don't want it to start melting or anything like that. So I'm just gonna kinda move the flame in and out. Now, I also want to do the same thing on my pipe. I want to get it hot enough that I can see that it's softening up, but I want to try not to burn it much. Then when I get it done, I'm going to slide it in position. I'm going to hold it, and I'm going to slide my clamp into place. Once I get it there, I want to line my clamp up over dead center. That way I know it's right above that hole. and tighten it up. Now, I've heated up the pipe, I've heated up the inside of this. As long as I stop the water, when I heat this up and put it together, I'm not gonna have any problem. This is actually gonna seal this and hold it long enough for me to call a plumber, long enough for me to get somebody out there. And if all this does is save me an emergency fee for getting a plumber out in the middle of the weekend, the middle of the night, anything like that, this one little repair is gonna save me a lot of money and it was quick and easy to do. Now, I did this with a torch because I've got it. I probably should have used a little bit smaller tip, but to be honest, you can use a lighter, just a cigarette lighter. All you're trying to do is heat up and melt the inside of the plastic and the outside of the pipe. That way, when they go together, they help seal. So the next one we're gonna do is a copper water line. 
because this we actually see more often than the PVC. We're gonna put a hole in the copper line about the size of one that we would normally find either out in the yard or up under the house. So that's about what it would look like, okay? That's gonna be a little bitty hole. This is about 1 16th of an inch, very tiny. But I'm gonna show you something that you could do. Say you found this, say you've got water coming up in your yard, you dig it up, you see this. Well, it's the weekend again. You don't wanna have to call the plumber out for an emergency call, but you don't want your water to be running all weekend either. Okay, so this little bag of screws down here in Texas, where we have the corrugated tin roofs, these are screws for that. It's a self-tapping screw with a rubber and metal washer on it. Now, if you don't have these, you can take a washer set and a regular self-tapping screw. You wanna grab the smallest, softest one that you have, put it on there, but you wanna remember, don't tighten this down super tight. You don't wanna push that rubber all the way out. That's what I love about these. They've got the metal washer here. You could find a metal washer, but find one that small around everything you have. Good luck with that. If you've got it, you've got it. If you don't, you don't. So we're gonna take the one for the corrugated roof. We're gonna go ahead and put our nut driver in here. What you do is take this, line it up right on the hole. Now, you're probably gonna wanna turn your water off. You wanna make sure you don't have water just spraying all over you. At least turn it off at the meter type to try to take the pressure off. And again, remember your safety equipment. Once it snugs down, that's gonna pull that rubber washer right up against the pipe and hopefully stop your water from running out there. So anyway, I've showed you two tricks that can actually keep you from having to spend the money on getting a plumber out for an emergency. If you've got any tips or tricks that you've seen, you've used, or you've done, or if you're a plumber and you know some that I haven't put in here to show people how to save a few dollars in an emergency situation, do me a favor, leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think. Do you like these? Have you tried them or have you used them? Anyway, I'm interested to know what you think. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber. I'll see you in the next video if you don't get flushed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, yeah, do we need to move it? So I'm gonna grab my torch and get over here and show you what I would do.